All right, so I'm working on my 2003 Dodge Ram. I believe this has an 11 and a half inch axle in the rear, uh, dual rear wheels. We are going to change the rear brakes and I'm going to also change, I think it's the support bracket or whatever they call it. Um, basically it's just a dust shield or splash shield, whatever you want to call it on the back side of the, the rotors there. Um, I'm also going to change the parking brakes. So we're going to do brakes, rotors, parking brake shoes, little parking brake levers, parking brake cables, and the uh, support shield in the back or dust shield, like I said, whatever you want to call it. First thing we're going to do is going to take this wheel off or these wheels off. Hopefully they come off. Um, they do make tools to help pull those off. They're like little pullers that, uh, that actually will they go in there and they'll, they'll pull the wheels off. Hopefully I don't need to use that, um, but we'll find out. So first thing we're going to do is take this wheel off. We need a 15 16 socket to get the lug nuts off. It's going to be like that. Not that very loud. All right, so I'm gonna take the caliper bolts off, or the caliper guide bolts that come that are bolted to the bracket. Remove them. They have 13 millimeter, at least on this. Um, might be able to get in there with. Um, with a swivel socket. You might actually, I think you can actually get in there with an actual socket, depending on your setup. But it looks, uh, looks, looks all right with this one. And then after that, I'm gonna take off the bracket, the caliper bracket bolts, which are right there. Those should be. Um, 13 sixteenths, I believe. So I got the caliper off, I got it hung up by a, by a strap so it's not pulling on the hose and we're going to take off these two bolts on this bracket here, it should be 13 16 and then we got to pull the axle. Have some gear oil come out of this so this is 9 16 bolts i'm gonna pull these off pull the axle out So there is a paper gasket in here. You can use like an RTV or something if you want, but I bought the paper gasket for that. So when I replace it, I will put that in. So take this out, put it out of the way someplace where it ain't gonna get damaged or dirty or covered in anything. I wiped some of the oil off of it. You are gonna wanna clean up the surface to get any of the gasket material off there before you replace it. 
Uh, this broke into a couple pieces, so gotta get the extra pieces off. You should know what to do. Uh, rust in there, that's what you like to see. All right, so we got this little snap ring in here. It's kind of like a wire ring. It, it's, it's split. So you're gonna pick that off. It starts in this groove here. It keep, basically, it's got a little hook on there. It keeps the keyway in for this nut. So that's what that looks like. A little keyway in there. You pull out. There's your keyway. That aside, don't lose it. Um, so I'm gonna recommend this socket. I bought it. It wasn't very expensive. It is a six lug by two and five eighths outer spindle nut. Is a part number. This goes into here, this special nut, because you will have to torque this when you put it back in. That's what that looks like. So, I'm not changing the bearings, I'm gonna repack them. Yes, this is a full floating, uh, hub, it is oil bath, it is an oil bath hub, but I will be greasing these bearings before I uh, put them back in, even though it's oil bath. The manual states to grease them, um, which is odd because it's the same axle that's in a Chevy, and the Chevy doesn't state to grease them. I believe they tell you just jack up each side to let the oil flow over there, which I'm going to do both but it's just the way that it is and I'm just telling you exactly what it says to do. So you're gonna repack these with grease before you put it back together. bearing out so I don't send it flying. So, problem I'm having is the brake shoes came off of this backing plate here and they're jammed inside the hat so as I'm pulling them they're just bending over and they're not coming out because they're stuck up here at the top so I'll find a way to get them out and then it should come off. Alright, I ripped that thing up. I was able to get in here behind the adjuster with a pry bar and pry it out so hopefully it comes off now. Oh, great. 
All right, so you got some bolts in here that remove the brake rotor from the hub. They are 15 millimeter. I'll put this in the bearing hole, keep some dirt from falling in there. These bolts are shouldered. Yep. There. So I'll pull the seal out. I cleaned up uh, the surface here. There was a little bit of a bit of rust in here where the uh, where the where the rotor sat. I made like kind of like a triangular gap but anyway so I'm gonna pull this out seal out anyway if I can get it with this make sure you don't hook the uh, the edge or the ceiling surface just ain't wide enough to really get it Oh, I lost my spring. So I'm going to take this, clean it up, clean whatever rust and crap might have fallen into these bearings, do some brake clean or something, kind of wash it out. Make sure you look at them, make sure there's no pitting or anything that's wrong with them. They all look fine. All right, so I got those bearings greased, all ready to go. I got my new seals. Um, here's the part number, if you can see it possibly. It is 710563. There's a Timken seal. They do have different seals, I believe, for a dually or a single wheel. I think there's different seals anyway. They did specify. They also have the seal driver. I got this from, uh, I think, Torque, Torque Off-Road 4x4 or something like that. Um, part number is QT1546. Uh, I don't know if the seal driver is different. I think it is. This kit was specifically for a dually. It came, I got a kit, it came with the seal driver and it came with the drive the cones to drive the races on both sides I believe that they are different for the dually as well so keep that in mind when you're ordering your parts that they might specify a dually or a not dually a little grease on there kind of help it seal 
I did I, I did them before on my single wheel and I didn't have a seal driver and I haven't had any problems they've been in there like six years so I don't know if you need the seal driver I got it because it's a pain to do this so I'd want to do it right and that's why I got it They have one like this too that it does both uh, both axles, a 10 and a half and 11 and a half. This one is an 11 and a half. Um, it also drives it to depth. There's a raised surface here, so this, this actually drives on the edge. It recesses into it, so that's why I got this. I think the seal was like 40 bucks. I believe it was like 80 to $100 for the entire kit. Um, I plan on keeping this for a while, so I figured I would just buy it because I did. Um, in the past, I've driven the cones in for the bearings with the old bearings. I'll put the old bearings in the cone and I'll use a driver on that bearing and just kind of like rotate it as I'm driving it in. And then I throw the old bearing away and put the new bearing in. I've done that. That's how I usually do it. But anyway, that's why I did what I did. So. Let's see, here it is. These are the brake rotors I got. 780139. These are Rebesta Specialty. Don't know if they're good or what the deal is with them, but they looked alright. They're supposed to be coated with extra humidity in the bag. But anyway, I'll get into that. I'm going to put them on there. I'm probably going to put a little bit of um, Loctite on the bolts. We're going to torque these 10 bolts or 8 bolts with a 2, 4, 6, 8. These 8 bolts, we're going to torque those to 95 foot pounds. Torque these to 95 foot pounds. So I'm in there, make sure you don't get anything on your bearings. Alright, right, so I got these all torqued, 95 foot pounds, ready to go. Next thing I do is take this apart. Um, Gonna have these four nuts on the back. They are metric. I don't know what size they are. I think maybe 24 millimeter. Um, I'm I got a 15 16 socket or not socket but wrench because you can't really get in there because they're stuff in the way. Like I said I got 15 16 on it. I think that's a 24. I'm not exactly sure. Kind of a shame these brakes were all semi new when I guess it stopped once the guy sees the engine up but that was a long time ago now I think he had it sitting for six for three years and well, I had it sitting for about three years too Still got a little bit of the seal on here. We got to get off. All right, I jumped forward a little bit. So I got 
that seal off, which was quite the pain. I got the bracket off, which you saw me loosen. Um, so that bracket had four kind of like wheel studs in there. You got to drive them out to get the uh, dust shield off. Once those are driven out, then the dust shield part comes off. I uh, took my needle scaler. I cleaned up the other side. I cleaned up this inside this hole here. So I got this ready to go back together basically. Um, so let's see what I got for parts for you. These are the dust shields for the back, which are those right there. Here's a kit of two, I believe. I got a parking brake kit to put the parking brakes in. That is a kit for them. I got the parking brakes to put in. That is the part number for them. I got the lever kit to put in. That is the part number for the lever kit. Um, you can buy the, the ones for the Chrysler one still, I believe, but this is what I got because I got them all from Rock Auto in one shebang. So that's that. So let's go put it together. All right, so get these. These go through there, hold them on, which also goes through here like so, and that sticks in. So we'll line these up until they're kind of in their notch, and then drive them back in. Or you can press them in. I'm just getting them started. I'm not, that's not all you do. Probably take a socket on the back side and stick it on the ground, however you want to do it. That's in. They'll probably pull in too. If you don't get them in all the way, I'd imagine they're probably gonna pull in when you tighten them up. So this kind of goes in there and recesses in there. I had a kind of an issue before with these Dorman ones on my other one. Uh, this little piece here was touching the rotor. So you'd hear it go tss, 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 tss. got pretty annoying. So when you put it together, just make sure this isn't touching your rotor. And if it is, you're gonna wanna clearance it or something like that. So you don't get said sound. But anyway, so that's together. So, um, I gotta imagine I could probably put the shoes on too, because I used to, they do sell these kits as one whole thing. So let me try to just put the shoes on while I'm out here also. And then we don't have to mess around with them inside on the truck. Not that I really think that that's going to be a big deal, you know. Um, and I'll just put it on the truck and put the shoes on because I don't think that's going to be really a problem. I don't, know. I don't know. Maybe it'll be easy to get the the clips on with it out. Because never sees fixes everything. So I'm using never sees inside this little thing here. Whether it's better or not, I don't know. It's probably the wrong thing to use. It's just what I'm using. So use with the right stuff and use whatever you're comfortable with. But I've been kind of using this lately. And uh, I used it before, but I like it better than the other stuff. Because it, I find it's not doesn't stay there long. Like I'll do brakes and later on they're kind of seasoned up. And I put brake caliper grease on there. And I was... Wasn't working out well for me. So, let's say this might be the wrong stuff, but it's what I'm using. Use what you want. There. Now that I got the wrong stuff on there, 
I'll put some of these pieces on. Here, sitting on, I've been crouching for hours. This isn't supposed to take this long, but for some reason it's taken me forever. Um, so, let's see. I got this guy, how did it come off? Came off facing this way. So I have it laying down. Yep. This pulls forward to open it. So that is correct. So yeah. Probably work better if you put them in right. that rubber boot in there so tight that it's like it's engaging these brakes up at this sorry to put some lubricant on these threads and star wheel should go facing this way at least on this one it, I think they're different depending on which side you're working on because I think this bracket goes in like one way and then it's like flipped upside down for the other side so maybe they do go the same way they're just on the opposite side and upside down Maybe. I don't know. I gotta look at the other side. I don't remember. together together forever yeah, this is that oh. I guess so I get this guy because I hate parking brakes. I mean, I hate parking brakes. I don't know if I said it enough, but let me see. Hey, camera on? Yeah, camera's on. I don't have to do it again. But let me say it again. I hate parking brakes. I can't adjust them worth a the crap. I always have a problem with them. It's just very frustrating for me. So I got the tool 
what you're supposed to use to adjust them. So what you do is you take this side, you set that to the inside of your brake rotor hub. Set it to the inside. Then you come over and you go 164th in, smaller, and then you come over here and you set it to your uh, your um, your shoes, and then you have your shoes correct. So what they actually say to do is they don't say to go side to side. They say to go from the top edge to the bottom edge, which is going to be the widest point apparently, is from what the instructions say. And then you set it to that. Make sure it doesn't drag. So I'm gonna do that. Hopefully I have a better time with it. Oh, I forgot to put this on. Hopefully I have a better time with it because, like I say, I hate doing parking brakes. Parking brakes, emergency brake, whatever type of brake. I don't care what you call it. These. No, I don't. So that would probably get you perfect, but I can't do that because it's not in enough. Well, you know what I probably could do is tip it like that. There we go. So we got one bolt there, one bolt there. That's about... That's about it. What do we got here? We have got eight... And what? What are these? These are quarters. These are sixteenths. Thirty seconds, sixty fourths. So we'll take it. We'll make it one sixty fourth smaller. So we're eight and one, two, three, almost four. So four sixty fourths. Eight, eight and four sixty fourths, or eight and eight and uh, eight and an eighth. So we'll take this. And I'll make it a 64th smaller. If I can loosen the thing up without it going flying. Should be it. It's in there and a tiny bit. Let me make sure we're right where we're supposed to be. Yep. I think we're good. To my doodad, take the flat sides and you're going to expand them until they are correct. So I guess what I'm going to do is probably make sure I don't have anything that sticks out past this. See, let me, I put the wrong spring in. There's two different springs and they kind of go with the, the flow of the... Are there two different springs? Oh, listen to me. I thought I put the wrong spring and I just had it kind of bent up wrong. Correction. So I got these two little ends right here. I'm keeping those flush with the top so you're not getting them in there diagonally. If they're in there, obviously if you're like this, it's gonna make it not fit right. It's like right there it's dragging but if I pull out up to where it's supposed to be and hold everything flat it's that's close still so initially it said go diagonally from here to here the widest point but I'm finding it's dragging right here so I would check a couple of different areas to make sure that it's um, where it's supposed to be if you just do the corners like it said to do like this was rubbing now I don't know if that's some type of break-in thing where it breaks in 
and then it doesn't rub didn't really say just grazes right there up here we don't and then here we don't so let's put this in Taking a full of bolts. I think they're supposed to be like 100 or 150 pounds or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but you can't get a torque wrench in there anyway. So I'm just gonna go tight. I'm hoping I don't have to adjust this because you can't get at this. It's like the, the brackets in the way of the adjuster. So it ain't gonna be fun. So I got my bag of 75W90 full synthetic gear oil. Oh, that was good. Hence the reason I don't want it in a bag. Just gushed everywhere. <clears throat> ah, let's put a little gear oil on these mating surfaces. Where the bearings go, just so they kind of slip on a little bit easier. the seal on the way in. I don't feel any drag. When I pull on the little lever, it doesn't move much and it locks right up. So I think we're I think we're pretty good. Hopefully that seal sealed right. I mean, it kind of slipped on there a little easier than I thought it should have, to be perfectly honest. Usually you got to kind of force them on. But that one slipped right on, so a bit of a concern. We'll see how it goes. Take some of this and spray it in there and fill it up as much as I can, so it's in there. I guess that's the benefit of a bag.
So this you're going to torque to 22 foot-pounds while it's rotating the hub. And uh, once it's tight, you're then going to back it off 30 degrees or to the next notch. Then put your keyway in and uh, be done. I'll put your keyway in, then put your snap ring on, then we'll put clean this up, put the seal on, axle on, brakes, that kind of stuff. That should be good. Back it off to the next one. Up there. You in? A little hook. A little hook hole. That parking brake isn't too tight. So I put, I uh, ended up like pulling on that lever because it felt like there's a little more drag on this than I would have liked. So I pulled on the parking brake lever and when I let off, it kind of centered it. And then it actually moves a lot smoother now. Now uh, that's part number four. The seal of the gasket here, it is 926-966. That's what it looks like. All right, so we're gonna torque these bolts, two, two bolts on here to 145 foot-pounds, and then we're gonna torque two bolts on the caliper to 22 foot-pounds. Um, so, I say change your hardware. This, these brake shoot pads were changed shortly before I got them. They actually look brand new aside from the cobwebs on them. So, I'm not going to replace them but you obviously you want to replace those your hardware put some you know lubricant or never sees or something underneath the the hardware to try to keep it from rusting and, and pushing those out and then kind of squeezing up against the pads and jamming them in there um, make sure your guide pins are free these are free um, you want to obviously push your brake pedal down a few times before you drive away 
make sure that these pistons are pushed back out you want to actually push them back in if they haven't been pushed out um, I kind of pried against the ear to get them pushed in or retracted you can use a pad put a pad in there and a clamp against the back to squeeze the two pistons in or you can use a, a uh, ratcheting uh, piston compressor thing it goes in there and you kind of ratchet it back and forth and it'll, it expands it pushes your uh, caliper pistons back in so depending on the side you're on it's gonna kind of slip down into the groove on one side of the caliper and then rotate up into the other side I'm going to tighten these ones to 22. So, put the wheels on. Um, for a single wheel, I believe it's 145. I've seen 145 said for the dualies as well. I've also said 155, I think, or 150 for the dualies. So, I mean, I would check your year and, and stuff and make sure that that's the correct lug nut torque for you. I'm going to go 150 because it's kind of right in the middle. And, uh, yeah, make sure this is all kind of clean in here. Any big chunks of rust or anything on there. This has got some never sees on it still from the last guy. So the lug nuts on this actually say 140 foot pounds to torque them to, but I'm going to do 150 just because I got this extension on here. It's pretty long. Oh, so we're all done. What is that? I have no idea. Huh. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, it's not only supposed to take a couple of hours or whatever, but it's taken me far longer than that. I'm either really bad at it or this really is worse than described. But I did have some of the other things to do. But. Anyway, dancing around the camera kind of makes it take a little longer also. So, yeah, hope that could help somebody. Thanks for watching.